were expecting to see three different types of glacial landforms. The first are elongate streamlined features, um, including drumlins and glacial lineations. And these are produced bet um, beneath fast flowing parts of the ice sheet. So they're really useful as they tell us about uh, where the ice sheet used to be flowing in the past. The second type of landform um, are ridges orientated transverse to the former ice flow direction, including high amplitude ridges uh, such as moraines and lower amplitude features called grounding zone wedges. These ridges show the former position of what we call the grounding zone, which is the point at which the ice sheet stops being in contact with the seafloor and starts to float. So mapping the position of these ridges shows us the places that the ice um, reached during the past and can tell us about the speed and style of deglacial retreat. The third type of landform are curvilinear chaotic scours into the sea floor. And these are um, produced by the grounding of iceberg keels into soft seafloor sediments. These landforms can tell us about the size of icebergs in the past, past oceanographic conditions, and also tell us about the position of the front of the ice shelf as it's from this region that the icebergs were carved in the Weddell Sea. When examined all together, this group or assemblage of landforms can tell us a lot about the form and flow of past ice sheets. And in the Weddell Sea, all of these landforms would have been produced and preserved on the seafloor during the last 20,000 years ago or so, since the last time the ice sheet was at the shelf break during the last glacial maximum. Essentially, we want to build maps that show the depth of the seafloor, and then we can identify and interpret the landforms on these maps. Conventionally, we would use systems such as multi-beam echo sounding um, attached to ships. So in this system, um, you have multiple pings of acoustic energy, which are transmitted down through the water column. They reflect off the seafloor and then um, come back to be detected by the ship. And then we're able to transfer this measurement for two-way travel time into a measurement of water depth. However, on the Weddell Sea Expedition, we're going to be using this kind of equipment um, on AUVs which are the automated um, underwater vehicles, or the mini submarines that are remote controlled. And the advantage of using the AUVs is that they will be travelling a lot closer to the seafloor, so we'll be able to make those maps in much higher resolution. So these landforms can tell us about the past extent and dynamics of the ice sheet. We only have uh, aerial images and satellite images for the last 50 to 60 years. So we need to look into the record of past um, activity in order to find out about longer term behaviour and patterns and processes of sedimentation of ice sheets. In the Weddell Sea area, the Antarctic Peninsula is responding uh, very dramatically um, to changes. We've seen a lot of retreat and break up of floating ice shelves. We've seen large calving events and there's a general trend of um, retreat and acceleration of the glaciers as well. So we're trying to find out whether these changes have happened um, further back within relatively recent geological time and um, within the period that we call the Holocene, um, the last 10,000 years ago or so, or whether we're actually seeing something that's more unusual and ultimately more concerning.